Hey, what's up, YouTube? Gotham Rose is going to give us a little guide on how to overclock on Raspberry Pi 3. Now, just a little heads up, this is going to void the warranty, and honestly, in my opinion, it's not really worth it unless your Raspberry Pi can go to the 1.35 or 1.4. The 1.3, really, there's not a noticeable difference, and it's going to void the warranty. But if you're really into that and you really want to overclock it, this is going to be a video on how to do it. And again, a warning, this will void your warranty, and it is for advanced users. Today I'm going to be bringing you guys information on how to overclock Ray's 128 gig RetroPie image. First thing you need to do is connect your Raspberry Pi and make sure that you are connected to either Ethernet cable or on Wi-Fi. Once you have that, you'll have your IP address of your Raspberry Pi. You're going to want to get a program that does SSH Telnet such as PuTTY. So what I'm going to do is I went to the PuTTY homepage and I'm going to go ahead and download the PuTTY program. It's very small. I've downloaded it three times as you can see. It's like 600K. You're going to want to download it and run it. This is going to gain you root access to your Raspberry Pi. So you want to go ahead and double click it, run it. It's going to then prompt you with information that it needs. It needs the host name of your Raspberry Pi. You can get this from the Retro Arc menu. You can click on Wi-Fi and see your IP address. I know that this is the IP address of my Raspberry Pi. It is most likely to be a 192 address as most people are using home Wi-Fi or wired connection. So this is the IP address of the machine and the default for all Raspberry Pi units out the box, the username is Pi and the password is Raspberry. So I wanna make sure I type my IP address correct. I'm gonna hit open. It's then gonna prompt me with login as. This is all lowercase, no spaces. So I'll type PI, enter. Then I'll type the word Raspberry, R-A-S-P, B-E-R-R-Y, enter. Now I have my root location. And if you notice, you're actually not where you need to go. This has a bunch of crash logs and, and stuff that's got messed up. So your best bet is I personally like to do a thing. I like to be logged in and I do a pseudo bash. So I log in as root. Root is like the admin, the owner of the directory. And I'm the home directory. I'll then type cd dot dot, cd dot dot. This will bring me to the base folder. So I went back to all the way into the base drive. You're then going to want to go into the boot directory. So type change directory to the boot directory. And if you look at the boot directory, we have a file here called config. And we also have a file I made called config backup. First thing you want to do is back up your config file. You don't want to break anything. You don't want to mess it up. So you definitely want to back it up. In order to back it up, you're going to type CP, which is uh, we're going to create and paste a new thing. So you'll type CP config, the exact name, config.txt. And then you can call this, like, I already called it config backup. I'll call it backup2.txt. I already created one. So I went ahead and now type ls. And you'll notice we now have our config2 that I created, our backup I had from before, and our config.txt. So what we're going to do is we want to be modifying our, our clock speeds in the config file.txt. So you, the way to do that, you're going to type vi, this is all done from a machine, a cell phone, whatever you have, vi config. So now we have all this information. This looks like a bunch of mumble jumble. This is actually what we want to do. We want to go ahead and it says uncomment to overclock the arm. I've ever actually done this. I just haven't saved this. I went ahead and copy and paste the 1.3 gigahertz command. It's in line 42. It actually says this. It will say this in the file, the main file. This will be here. You'll just delete ARM Freakers 800. You'll delete that. And then you'll copy and paste this overclocking. Your Raspberry Pi will void the warranty. Very important. This is for a raised 128 gig image. It is not overclocked out the box. It runs at 1.2 gigahertz out the box. I'm actually one of the few unlucky people. This 1.35 uh, doesn't run very well. My Pi boots up, but it's very unstable. My, computer, my Raspberry Pi won't even boot up as 1.4. So I only overclocked to 1.3. It is uh, very stable for me. I don't have any issues with these clock speeds. It works well. So kind of test yourself if you're getting crashes or it's not stable. Just lower your clocks. Just get the machine stable. So once we made these changes, you'll go ahead and copy and paste this information in the Vim command. You type exclamation point, write quit, exclamation point, I wrote to the file and quit. Now you can go ahead and check your speeds by checking cat here. So we made the overclock changes. You then would actually want to reboot. I did a reboot. You see I did a reboot. I had a 1.3 before. It wasn't stable. Now I just clocked it to 
That was my old clock. This is my new clock. And if you don't get your changes, just do a reboot and then check after you reboot. So you want to make changes, reboot the device. You can just do a sudo. I'm typing here. You can just do sudo reboot. Sudo reboot. You'll be good to go to reboot the device. Thank you for watching. If you could, please like and subscribe. If you do have any questions, please comment below. And let us know what you think about the overclock, whether you think it's worth it or not, in the comments below. We'll see you guys next time.